Good morning. Welcome to Victory Baptist Church. It's great to see all of you this morning. If you haven't already done so, please find a place to sit. And once you have done so, please stand with us as we sing till the storm passes by to begin our time together this morning. In the dark of the midnight have I oft hid my face While the storm howls above me and there's no hiding place Amid the crash of the thunder, precious Lord, hear my cry Keep me safe till the storm passes by Till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Many times Satan whispered, there is no need to try, for there's no end of sorrow, there's no hope by and by. But I know thou art with me, and tomorrow I'll rise where the storms never darken the skies. Till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. When the long night has ended and the storms come no more, let me stand in thy presence on that bright, peaceful shore, in that land where the tempest never comes. Lord, may I dwell with thee when the storm passes by. Till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Beautiful singing this morning. Brother Shane, would you come and open our service with prayer, please? Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, so much for uh, being able to be a member of a church that sings praises to your holy name, that lifts you up and not ourselves, it doesn't sing about how we will love you and we will do all these things for you, but rather we sing to your honor, to your glory, for you are good and merciful and graceful and loving and kind and pure and mighty. Uh, would that your name always be lifted up in this congregation, uh, that we would not lift ourselves and puff ourselves up in vanity, but rather we would always lift high the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, I pray that you make of our pastor a preacher this morning, that he might preach the, your holy word into my life, the lives of my children, the lives of my friends, the lives of those who've come here today to hear from your holy word, that we are sinners in need of a Savior. Lord, we love you and praise you, and thank you so much for your goodness to us. Oh, God, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Gentlemen, I was glad when they said unto me, 
let us go into the house of the Lord. I hope that you're glad to be here today. I hope that you're looking forward to uh, hearing from God's word and singing to your God and worshiping your God and praising your God and serving and loving your God so that we can go out these doors and we can serve him for the rest of the week. All right, just got a few announcements. Please note first, this is really important. Uh, from now on, the announcements will be rotating online so that I don't have to make announcements. Two weeks ago, I made 14 announcements on a Sunday morning. I mean, that's almost a second sermon, amen? And so we don't need that. And so please note that before church, between services, the announcements will be on the wall and you can see uh, most of them each week. Today, but we will be having, uh, we'll be having child rearing family class at 1 p.m. Uh, between this service and the second service. There'll be a pizza lunch for those who stay. All are welcome, but don't you come just for pizza, amen? You come for preaching too. So we're going to have some preaching on family and child rearing in the home and things like that. Uh, these services won't be online, but they will be right here at starting at uh, 1 p.m. this afternoon. There'll be no ladies Bible study until mid-September. I'd like to take this time. Uh, I've really trimmed my announcements down a lot. I'd like to take this time this morning and welcome any visitors we have in this first section. It's good to see uh, Miss Brother and Mrs. Cleveland are back with us. Thank you for being here. Now this is two in a row. So after that, three times, I don't recognize you anymore. So you come three in a row, we won't be recognizing you as visitors anymore. Then you become part of the furniture, amen. All right, um, we have these folks in the back. Could you, sir, could you introduce your, uh, your family to us all one more time? Amen. Thank you for being here. God bless you. Now, Brian, right? All right. How many remember Chris? Is it Ivy? Ivany. How many remember Chris and Stephanie? This is his brother. So there you go. So that's a, an association for you. All right. I don't think there's any visitors in this section. All right. Wow. Riley, you, Abby, you, you got to take care of this because it's going to go on and on and on. So could you introduce these folks to us for sure that are visitors? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> that was a lot easier. Uh, you got one more. I think slipped in the back door right there. One more. All right. Last but definitely not least, the last should be first and the first should be last. So you're very welcome. Thank you for being with us this morning, all of you. God bless you all for being here with us this morning. All right. In this uh, section, do we have any visitors? I don't see any, but I, I don't want to miss any. It's good to see Aaron. Haven't seen you in a while, buddy. Good to see you, brother. Amen. Um, I think everyone in this section pretty much is regular here. Okay, let's go to this next section. Yes, Joy, can you please introduce your friend? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here, Raylene. It's great to have you this morning. Amen. That is so wonderful. Okay, and I don't think that, yeah, I think there's one. Yeah, there's another family right there. Who's the oldest? I know mom's working today. I know mom, who's the oldest? Can you please tell me your name and everybody else's name, okay? Amen, thank you. These folks are originally from South Sudan. It's great to have them. And I think we have two more right in here. You were here a week or so ago, weren't you? Can you tell us your name again, please? Yes, please, yes, ma'am. You and your daughter both. Alexandra and your daughter is? Stephanie, good to have these folks with you. God bless you. Thank you for being here. You know what? I just want to say something real quick before I ask you to stand and shake hands with everybody. Hey, folks, Victory Baptist Church members, don't stop praying and don't get comfortable with first-time visitors. We have had first-time visitors every single Sunday for nearly over a year now. We need to thank God, only to God. It sure ain't... It sure ain't the preaching, and it sure ain't the good looks on the platform. I mean, look at Jerry and Jason. I mean, come on, man, right? Well, I'm okay, all right? Yeah, yeah. So, but let's stand together. Let's stretch, and let's say hello, welcome, and we're so glad you're here this morning. Let's stand together and say hi to somebody.
Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of Christ, my King. Through eternal ages, let his praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail By the living word of God I shall prevail Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God My Savior Standing, standing standing on the promises of God standing on the promises of Christ the Lord bound to him eternally by love's strong cord overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword standing on the promises of God standing 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 on the promises of God my Savior stand Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises, I cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. And of all the many promises he has, uh, may, uh, may today be the day when you can say, uh, I claim the promise, whosoever will may come. As army comes, who here took the ASL class? Can I see your hands? We have a few, wonderful. Um, so let's encourage army. We're very blessed to have her join us for this next song, Our God Reigns. Let's encourage her as she encourages us to practice what we learned. Our God Reigns. How lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, good news, announcing peace, proclaiming news of happiness. Our God reigns, our God reigns. no stately form, he had no majesty that we should be drawn to him. He was despised, and we took no account of him, yet now he reigns with the Most High. of the tomb he came with grace and majesty he is alive he is 
alive. God loves us so. See here his hands, his feet, his side. And yes, we know he is alive. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Amen. Thank you, Army. Praise the Lord. Please remain standing. We're going to new, uh, learn a new song, um, and I'm just going to sing the first verse and the chorus through once, and we're going to start from the beginning uh, once you get to know the tune and uh, some of the words. So, Across the Land, a new song for you this morning. You're the Word of God the Father From before the world began Every star and every planet Has been fashioned by your hand All creation holds together By the power of your voice Let the skies declare your glory Let the land and seas rejoice You're the author of creation you're the lord of every man and your cry of love rings out across the lands got it let's from from the verse one you're the word of god the father from before the world began every star and every planet has been fashioned by your hands you're the author of Together, by the power of your voice let the skies declare your glory let the land seas rejoice you're the author of creation you're the lord of every man and your cry of love rings out across the lands yet you left the gaze of angels came to seek and save the lost and exchange the joy of heaven for the anguish of the cross with a prayer you fed the hungry with a word you calm the sea yet how silently you suffered that the guilty may go free you're the author of creation you're the Lord of every man, and your cry of love rings out across the lands. With a shout you rose victorious, resting victory from the grave, and ascended into heaven, leading captives in your way. Now you stand before the Father, interceding for your own. From each tribe and tongue and nation, you are leading sinners home. You are author of creation. You're the Lord of every man. And your cry of love rings out across the lands. Great singing for a first time. You did great. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. As we close this morning. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior. This is my story, this is my song, 
Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending ring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. Thank you for that beautiful singing. Please remain standing as we open up God's Word. Amen. Please turn with me in your Bibles to John chapter 1 as we'll read verses 1 through 5 responsively. If you would, John chapters 1 through 5. John chapter 1, verse, uh, John chapter 1 verses 1 through 5. We won't be remaining in John. Uh, we preached uh, a series through the book of Titus, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, but that's not what we're doing today. So I hope that you will uh, join me as we read responsively. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, and I'll read the first and you read the second and so on. The Bible says this, in the Gospel of St. John, verse number one, the Bible says, in the beginning, now that beginning is the beginning of time and creation. In the beginning was the Word. So the Word is in the beginning of time and creation, and the Word was with God. Now notice this phrase carefully, and the Word was God. Verse two. All things were made by him. The him is that word. And without him was not anything made that was made. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Please read with me as we read together in unison verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as the only begotten of the father one more time in verse 14 together ready begin and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth what I'd like you to note with me please in verse 14 is that phrase that says and the word capital W and the word was made flesh. That means that that word that was at the beginning of time, that was the beginning of creation, was there with God, and that word, capital W, not only was with God, but is God. And in time, 4,000 years after the Garden of Eden, that same word came down and was laid in a manger. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask now in the name of Jesus that you would speak to each and every one of us. God, Holy Spirit, I cannot do the work. Only you can do the work. Only you can change a life. Only you can change a soul. I pray that everything we've sung, I pray that everything that we say, everything that will be done will be honoring and pleasing to you. Please, Lord, be the king in this room. Be the honored guest. Be the focus point, Lord. We love you and we need you. Help me to help your people today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. You may be seated this morning. I'm going to talk to you for just a few minutes this morning. I just want to talk about Jesus, uplift Jesus, honor Jesus for a while. There's times to come to church and I have to deal with problems. There's time to come to church and I have to teach people the truth. 
There's times that people come to church and we have to uh, preach doctrine. And by the way, doctrine still matters. Amen. What you believe does matter. It's not enough to rally around John 3, 16. Doctrine does matter. Uh, 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 methodology still matters. We're still going to sing songs that honor Christ and uplift the name of Jesus Christ. By the way, in case you're panicking, don't panic. We're not ever getting rid of the old Bible. In case you're nervous because we sang a new song, <gasps> we're not throwing away the hymnal. Say amen. amen. It's okay. But we are going to follow Christ and we're going to listen to the Spirit of God and we're going to continue down uh, the right path, or I should say, continue up the high road for the Lord Jesus Christ. So this morning I want to talk to you about Jesus Christ. What is Jesus all about? Who is he and what is he? If you talk to the people in the Middle East, they'll tell you he might have been a prophet. If you talk to some people here in the West, in the realms of academia, they might tell you he was just a madman that had a mad following for a little while in time. But if you talk to somebody who really knows him and has had a personal meeting and intervention with him, they'll tell you who he is and what he's all about. So if you want to understand what Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ is all about, we need to understand who he is. And so this morning I'm just going to talk to you about who he is for just a little while. And uh, before I get into that part of it, I just want to say to you, uh, it's important that you understand this because it's very hard for non-Christians to understand this. And this is the way I would explain it to, to lost people in Ireland when I was in Ireland for 17 years. I would sit down with them. I'd say, now you have, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. So you have the word and you have God. Let's say those two together. The word and God. One more time, say it. And the Word was with God. And then it says, and the Word was God. The Word is God, and God is the Word. Some people think Jesus is only the Son of God. Some people think that Jesus is only a prophet. Some people think that Jesus was only a madman in the wilderness. But if you know him, you understand that he is God Almighty. Can you say amen right there? So, and the word was God. And then the Bible says the word became flesh in verse 14 and dwelt among us. God came down and became one of us. When you say no one understands what I'm going through. No one understands the burden that I bear. No one has suffered the pain that I've gone through. No one understands. There is one that absolutely does understand. His name is Jesus. And what is Jesus all about? That's what I just want to talk to you for about for just a little bit this morning. First, I'd like you to notice that Jesus Christ, he is the God of creation. He is the God of creation. Jesus made it all and all was made by him. He created everything to bring glory and honor and pleasure unto his name. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills, the wealth of every mine. Jesus is the great creator, truly all is thine. Jesus is the creator. There's nothing that's been made that was not made except by the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the great creator. Now that was something I didn't know when I first became a Christian. I always thought that God the Father made everything and God the Son died for me and the God the Holy Spirit lives within. That's not true. Jesus made everything. Does that get you excited? He made everything. Every hair on your head is numbered. Every hair that has ever fallen out of your head is numbered. Every cell in your body is uh, known by Jesus Christ. Every proton, neutron, electron in the human body, Jesus knows about it. There's no overload of information with Jesus. Jesus is the creator of every grain of sand upon the seashore. He is the creator of every drop of water in all the ocean. And all the stars were named by him because Jesus Christ is the creator of all things. You, my friend, are his greatest creation. You are the pinnacle of God's creation. Though you look up at the stars at night and how beautiful they may shine, you have to realize that you and I are more valuable than all the stars put together. You see, he died not for the sand nor the drops of water in the sea, nor for the beautiful stars above, but he came to earth and he died for you. 
and he died for me. Jesus Christ is the great creator of the universe. If I were God, I wouldn't have made it. I would not have created it. If I were God, after watching a little while, I would have blown it up and got rid of it. But hallelujah, thanks be to God, you and I are not God. We are just his creation. So why did God the creator, why did Jesus Christ the great creator, why did he make us? Let's look at the wall, Revelation 4.11. I think this sums it all up really, really, really good. If you think about the power of these words, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for, read the blue words out loud with me, ready? For thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Why were the Rockies created? For his pleasure. Why was the Atlantic, Pacific, Indian Ocean created for his pleasure? Why were there elephants and, and why were there uh, giraffes? They were created for his pleasure. Why are there boys and girls and children across this country and all over the world? We were created, all things were created for him and for his pleasure they are and were created. We need to get back to initial intent and purpose of why you and I are here. We, my friend, are here for his pleasure. That changes the whole purpose. There are some megalomaniacs and egomaniacs on the planet that really think that they were born to rule the world. Some of them have sat in Ottawa, some of them sat in Washington, D.C., in Beijing, in London. They think that they were born to rule the planet. No, they weren't. They were born for his good pleasure. Isn't that amazing? It changes your whole perspective. If you realize the only reason you're really here is not to get to level 12 on PlayStation game, save the space commandos, right? Say amen. You are not here to break the bank at the all-you-can-eat pizza buffet at Pizza Hut. Say amen. You are here to not stackpile cash. You are here for his pleasure. That's why he made you. He made you to make himself smile. Think about it. He made you to make himself smile so he can look down at you and say, you're here for my pleasure. You're here to make me happy. Jesus is the great creator of all things. Number two, I want you to see about the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the God of salvation. Not only is he the God of creation, he is the God of salvation. And salvation is the most important thing. Now, we've had several visitors this morning in this section, this section, this section, not this one, but that one section also. And salvation is what you need. He created you for himself, but what you need is you need his salvation. He is the God of salvation. Now, what is salvation? Well, I've talked to people for decades now, <clears throat> and I'll say to them, have you ever been saved? And they'll say, oh, yes, I was saved. I was a boy once. I was swimming at the lake, and I couldn't make it to the dock, and I started to flounder, and I started to go under, and I started to drown. But someone jumped in, an adult jumped in, and pulled me, and rescued me, and dragged me up on the dock, and saved me. God saved me through that lifeguard. Can I say to you, no, 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 10,000 times? No, that's not what I'm talking about right now. I'll ask someone else, and I've, uh, these are all true. These have all happened to me before. I'll ask someone, I'll say, have you ever been saved? They'll say, yes, God saved me. I was in a car accident, a car wreck, a terrible car wreck when I was in my teen years. And, and, and the 911 emergency crew came, and they pulled me out of the car wreck. Or another person will say, have you ever been saved? Oh, yes, I've been saved. I was in a burning building as a young person and the firemen came and rescued me. Folks, look up here. This is really important that you miss this. That's not God saving your soul. Watch it, stay with me now. That's God sparing your life so you can live to get saved. We still good? Salvation, he is the God of salvation and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Sometimes we'll ask people, why did Jesus come? Why did Jesus die on the cross? And they'll say, in the collective, they'll say, Jesus died on the cross to forgive us. Watch it, to forgive us. Stay with me, to forgive us. No, my friend, this is not a group effort. 
This is not a team effort. This is an individual decision. You need to come to the place where you say, Jesus died on the cross to save me and only me. Amen? Can I get an amen from saved? For me. You say, that's silly. God doesn't think about me. Hey, number one, he created you to make himself happy. He's the great creator. Number two, he came to earth because you're a sinner. And he died upon a cross to keep you out of hell because someone has to pay the price for your sins. Someone has, if you'll allow me to use a secular vernacular, someone's got to pay the piper for the tune of sin. And so Jesus was willing to die. He laid down his own life. They didn't take it. The Romans didn't kill him. The Jews didn't kill him. He willingly laid down his life. Now this is what you need to get a hold of and let this one ring true in your soul. If you're visiting and you're not a true believer, you're a skeptic, you're a doubter, get this one down. If you were the one and you were the only human being that ever lived on this big old planet Earth, he still would have left heaven. He still would have come down. He still would have picked up the cross. He still would have laid it on the ground. He still would have put out one arm. He still would have put out the other arm. And then he would look at you as the only human being that ever lived. And he would say, pick up the hammer. Pick up the nails. That's how much I love you. You're worth it to me. You say, you don't know what goes on inside here. It doesn't matter. He does. And he still would look at you and look at me and say, it's worth it. For one soul, he would have done that. He is the God of salvation. Look at the Bible verse in Hebrews 2, 3 on the wall. The Bible says this, how shall we escape, escape hell, escape burning and torment forever in the flames and the fires of hell? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. How are we going to escape without salvation? We're not. You're not. I'm not. You say, I've got religion. I've got church. I'm a philanthropist. I give to the poor in the third world, around the world. That's how I'm going to escape because I'm a good, decent person. No, you're not. On your best day and your most wonderful day, you still belong in a devil's hell burning forever. Can you say amen to that if you're saved? It's true. He is the God of salvation. He says, I don't believe God loves us and would send us to hell. Really? How about this? I believe in a God that left his throne in heaven and was in a stinking dirty manger as a baby in Bethlehem and then lived a sinless, perfect, holy life and said, I'm going to become the sacrifice for your sin. He is the God of salvation. How are we going to escape if we don't receive Jesus Christ, you can't. Listen to me, please don't confuse me. I am not talking about going to church. I'm not talking about reading the Bible from cover to cover. I'm not talking about turning into Mr. Goody Two-Shoes and Mrs. Goody Two-Shoes. What I'm talking about is you looking up to him and saying, Jesus, I deserve hell. Save me, forgive me, and come into my heart and my soul and live inside of me and become a child of God. He is the God of creation. Not only is he the God of creation, number two, he is the God of salvation. But backslidden Christian, wayward Christian, out of church Christian, nonchalant, Laodicean, lukewarm Christian, make excuse type Christian, he is the God of restoration. He is the God of restoration. We still serve the God of the second chance. Somebody say amen right there. We serve the God of the second chance. Come home, come home. Ye who are weary, weary, weary with what? Weary with the world, weary with sin, weary with COVID, weary with apathy. Ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. O sinner, come home. We still serve the God of the second church. And durst I say this right now. This is going to be, as long as you still call me to be the pastor, as long as God still calls me to be the pastor of this church, this is still the church of the second chance. You can come back. Don't get quiet on me. Help me, Shane, here, because you're about the only guy that said amen right there. You can, Daryl, you can come back. You say, I can't, you can't. The only person that tells you you can't come back is the devil. Say amen right there. 
Now, if you're not a Christian, I'm not talking to you right now. You just kind of put your fingers in your ear and say, I'm not listening right now. But if you're a saved person, you're a church member, you're a child of God, and you've gone into the deep sin, and you've gone on to the deep, off the deep end, and you're as far away from God as a Christian can be, but you're still a Christian. Hey, listen, you can still come back. Help me, brother. The only one that tells you you can't come back is who? And who else? Satan. And Satan whispers in your ear and says, you can't come back. Yes, you can. Come home. God is the God of restoration. He still has a program and a plan for your life and my life. Let me give you some Bible for that. Psalms 51, 12. Look at the wall, if you would, please. God of restoration. Restoration. Restore unto me the joy. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit restore unto me the joy of thy salvation why is it that some people come to church for decades and still get fired up and cannot wait to hear the bible preached and cannot wait to sing to the lord and other folks come in and they sit and they soak and the sour it's because they've lost their joy not their happiness their joy there's a big difference between losing your soul and losing your happiness and losing joy joy is something that continuously has to be cultivated and worked on and 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 built you know what i this is the mile marker 30 in my marriage If anybody should get a Congressional Medal of Honor, it should be my wife, amen? But if you're gonna have joy in year 30 like you did year one, it's going to take work. It's going to take an effort. It's going to take a continuous building of a relationship that goes on and on and begin it again. But look at the first word. Let's say the first word in blue. Everyone say it out loud. Restore. Restore. How many of you have ever gotten dead, cold, quiet, apathetic, and you've been away from the Lord, even if you've been in church or out of church? Raise your hand. There's been seasons you're away from the Lord, though you're a saved person. Okay. But you have to work at the restoration. You ask God to restore the joy and bring the joy back and get your joy back, not your salvation, but the joy of your salvation. And then God uphold me with thy free spirit. Now, I know this is Old Testament, but I don't think it contradicts New Testament principle at all. You and I need the joy of the Lord. You ought to be excited about the Lord. You ought to be excited about the Lord Jesus Christ, who he is, why he put you here, why you're down here. You have a purpose. God has a plan. Find his purpose for your life. Fulfill his purpose for your life and get your joy back. Get your joy back. Listen, it's a little bit quiet. I hope it's just conviction, but some of you need to start smiling and saying amen right now or I'm going to go home and eat pizza. Amen. Right? You need your joy back. I, didn't need, I did not say you need to get born again again. I just said you need, according to the Bible, you need to get the restoration of your joy. And by the way, amen. By the way, it's important that each and every one of us get our joy and have the joy of the Lord in our hearts. We need that. He is the God of the second chance and restoration. Not only is he the God of creation, salvation, restoration, he is the God of consecration. Consecration is something that is lacking in every aspect of life in 2022. People don't want to be consecrated spiritually or otherwise. There's a commitment of consecration. Concentration takes gives Uh, consecration needs concentration you need to be committed to the cause that you believe God would have you to be committed to Psalms 37 5 on the wall of the God of consecration trust in the Lord with all thine heart with everything you've got on the inside trust in the Lord commit thy ways unto him have you committed your life to Christ number one I want everyone to look up here number one Commit your life to Christ. Give your heart to Jesus. Let him save your soul. But number two, have you committed the rest of your life to him? I didn't say church, to him. Walking with him, being with him, letting him be the happiness of your life. I have children and they bring me joy. I have grandchildren and they really bring me joy. 
I have a wife and she brings me joy. I have family and friends in church family and they bring me joy. But the real pinnacle, the focus of my joy needs to be my relationship with him. Do you understand that? It's so imperative. That's what happens with young people. They fall in love and they look at this beautiful other person and they say, you will bring me joy. You... <laughs> Let me fill in the blank for the rest of you. We've got this guy over here getting ready to marry a woman named Joy, right? <laughs> okay, and so you will bring me joy. Young people look at that person they're gonna marry and they say, you will bring me joy. And then they realize after a couple of years, the honeymoon's over, they don't bring me joy. So they decide to have children. And they look at the little one and they say, you will bring me joy till they grow up and break your heart. Mm-hmm and how and then they look for other avenues that you will bring me joy and this will bring me joy and that will bring me joy and the other thing will bring me joy but listen to me God needs to be the giver God needs to be the bringer of your joy get your joy back I can't do it it's like this honey put your stuff down for a second okay I can uh, uh don't be mad at me I, I'm, I'm so much in trouble whenever I use the illustration okay listen now what you need now this is metaphorical what you need is joy you need to get excited like I do on a Sunday morning you got uh, she's squeezing really hard pray for me um you need your joy you need your joy you need to get your joy back you got your joy you know I can do this all day long it's not going to bring your joy now stand up now stand up okay now you need your joy now listen to me you need your joy now listen you've got to get your joy now listen I am my fingers hurt stop but listen, I can't put it in her. She's got to find it from him and him alone. Go ahead, have a seat. Thank you. Amen. Does that make sense? You got to get it for yourself. Dad and mom can't work it up for you. No one can work it up for you. You must get that restoration and ask God to restore the joy of your salvation. He is the God of concentrate, uh, cons consecration and you must commit unto him. God says, be holy for I am holy. Too many people think holiness is a fake face of piety. I remember a couple of popes ago, <laughs> literally a couple of popes ago, that old guy gets up there, and I mean, he's moving. I'm not making fun of elderly folks. I, I, I am a 55 pluser now, so I'm not making fun of elderly folks, right? <sighs> like I said to my son, boy, I used to change your diapers. And he says, one day I'll be changing your diapers, right? <laughs> so listen, so that old Pope gets up there, he's like this. And he looks, and, and, the, and the guy on the BBC says, and there he is, the charismatic Pope. <laughs> Peace come to you from above. And look how joyous he is. I'm thinking, that's depressing. There's no joy in that. What I'm trying to say is we think holiness, isn't he such a holy man? I'm thinking that holiness is not a fake face on a Sunday morning. Hallelujah, God bless you, my children. So wonderful to be in the house of the Lord with you. Isn't the Lord good? Unless you're from Texas, then fake holiness is somebody loves you. God bless you. You just put those bucks in the plate. We'll be all right, y'all. I've got holiness on my side and a great perm, right? Listen to me. Sorry, that wasn't very Christ-like. I know, but neither is false teaching. Rebuke them. Expose them for the frauds that they are. Say amen. TV preachers are crooks. They smoke you for their money. Listen, holiness is not an act or a costume or a facial expression you put on. Holiness is God inside of you and realizing, you know what? I really want to do that. And I know it's anti-biblical and I know God's not in it. And God, you know what? I'm going to be holy because you don't want me to. Now, some people create oppression. See, there's three levels. I don't want to preach this. This is a whole nother sermon. You've got people that are legalists. You got people that are licentual. But then you've got in the middle what's called biblical liberty. Does that make sense? Legalist, legalist says, don't do this or you're bad. Don't do this or you're unholy. Don't do this or you're unholy. Don't do this and you're unholy. And the licentual says, come on, everybody, it doesn't matter. We're going to smoke pot for Jesus after the church and get filled with the Spirit. 
licentiousness and sin. You don't like that kind of talk. Don't worry. Your kids are seeing it on their phones and they're getting it at public school anyway. I might as well deal with it. It doesn't matter if the government says it's legal. It's still a sin against Almighty God. You're welcome. Amen. But listen to me now. Christians on the other side, it doesn't matter what you do. And so, you know, we're just going to have Christian adultery now and we're just going to have Christian pot smoking, Christian drunkenness and Christian this. That's licentiousness. Neither one of those are holiness. You have freedom and liberty in Jesus Christ. You have the freedom to follow him, to freedom to choose him, the freedom to want to walk the way he wants me to walk. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a big guy on Christian comedians and stuff, but I did watch this one guy, and he says, and he was, he was a British guy. I watched it years ago, and he says, and this kid comes up to me after the service, and he says, if I become a Christian, is this mean I need to stop living with my girlfriend? And the guy goes, duh, <laughs> duh. Hey, listen, God still wants us to be holy. Do you understand? Not miserable, holy. Not sour, holy. Say amen right there. That's all right, I'll preach it anyway. Okay, be holy, for I am holy because my heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ is the God of holiness. Not only is he the God of consecration, he is the God of revelation, hallelujah. Because he is the God of the revelation, he is also the God of tribulation, and that's scary, and you don't wanna go through the tribulation. You need Jesus, and someday, sooner or later, the trumpet will sound, the Christians will be gone. It really is in the Bible, no matter what the Calvinists say, no matter what the Southern Baptist Convention says, the rapture is coming before the tribulation. Say amen to that. And Jesus is coming again. I like that. I want everyone here to say it, whether you believe it or not. I want everyone to say, Jesus is coming again. Say it with me now. Come on. Now, if you really believe that, really shout, say amen. 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 He really is coming again. Look up. That's your joy. Now, pay attention for those, and I know there are several non-believers in the room, and you are welcome, and you are wanted, and you are loved, and you are prayed for, but listen to me. One day, Christians will disappear, and they'll be gone. It could be today. It could be 150 years from today, but you need to get ready now before it's too late, and you have to live on hell through or hell on earth. Mark of the Beast you hear about it on TV and the radio. It is real. It is coming. It's not yet. One world government, it is real. It is coming. It's not yet. One world religion, it is coming. It is real, but not yet. One world army, it is coming. It is real, but not yet. There's still a chance. Let me encourage every last one of you right now, if you've never been saved, let today be the day you ask Jesus, you ask Jesus to save your soul because he is the God of the revelation. Let's look at some verses as we close up here right now. Verse 11, Revelation, verse 11. And I saw heaven opened and behold, a white horse and he that sat upon him was called, say those two words out loud in blue. True. And in righteousness, he the judge and make war. That's Jesus Christ. Next verse, guys. 12, his eyes were a flame of fire. Yeah, do you believe that Jesus is coming on a white horse and he has x-ray eyes like Superman with fire blasting him? I sure do. His eyes were a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Verse 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called, say it out loud. What's his name called? One more time. Does that sound familiar from the start of the message? In the beginning was the word. You see, he started this thing and he's going to finish it right. That's not to scare you. That's to encourage you. You understand if you're in Christ, you're on the winning side. But you might, you've might you already won. Why don't you live like you've won and get your joy and restore your fellowship and get your consecration because he has a vesture dipped in blood. That's like his robes have blood on them. And his name is called the Word of God. That's Jesus Christ, the Word of God. That's another name for Jesus Christ. Some of you call me pastor. Some of you call me uh, dad. Some of you call me Mr. Handsome with muscles, right? Okay, just checking. Okay. Some of us call him King of Kings. Some of us call him Jesus Christ. Some of them call the Word of God. Verse 14. 
and the armies which were in heaven, that's us. If you're saved, you're in his army. You're in the Lord's army. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses and clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That's the uniform at the end of time. Verse 15, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. You say, do you really believe a sword goes flying out of Jesus' mouth with flaming fires out of his eyes? You bet your dollar bottom boots I do. You better believe I do. And with that with it he should smite the nations jesus has a sword coming out of his mouth mouth to smite canada to smite the united states to smite germany to smite france to smite kenya to smite nigeria to smite japan to smite italy he has a sword that comes out of his mouth to smite the nations and he sh you say i don't feel very loved and edified right now hey listen we need to deal with the truth say amen this is coming one day with a rod of iron and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of his wrath of almighty God. That winepress is the idea of stomping and smashing grapes. Do you understand when Jesus comes back at the end of time, he comes from heaven, he comes down and literally all the armies of the world are gonna pop under his feet like grapes. That's why the blood's gonna be up to the neck of the horses. And go to the next verse. And he hath on his vesture, that's his robe, his clothes, and on his thigh, a name written. Let's say those words together, say them. King of kings and Lord of lords. One more time. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the God supreme. But what each one of you need to do is make sure that he is your personal, Savior who died on the cross. What each one of you need to do after that is make sure that you have the joy of the Lord in your soul and that you can still come back and you can still, the only person that tells you you can't follow Christ is the devil and yourself. And the only reason yourself says is because you're listening to the devil without even knowing it. You can come back. You can walk with God. You can live the victorious Christian life. It is possible. It is what God's will is. And by the way, that's why he made you and he made me, is to walk with him until he calls us home. If he made you, please let him save you. Maybe he's already saved you, but you're very far from him. Please restore unto him. It's time to come home. It's time to make it right. Consecrated Christianity is so far from 2022 churches and Christians. It's time to re recommit our lives to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's have every head bowed and every eye closed as Haley comes to the piano. I don't know why the Lord led me this way this morning, but he clearly did. It just came and I just was driving back and the Lord told me this is what I need to preach about this morning. But I just want to encourage everyone, everyone, if you're a child of God and you know you're saved to a testimony of God, not because I'm asking you to, because you're not ashamed. How many here would slip their hand and say, to the testimony of God, I am a Christian, I am saved, I will be in heaven. There is no doubt I will be in heaven. I am sure I'm saved, yes, I'm saved. Raise your hand, don't be ashamed. If you're saved, raise your hand. All right, God bless you all. You may put your hands down. How many here say, I know someone in the room today that's probably not saved, and they need me to pray for them. There's someone in here, would you raise your hand? There's someone that I love Someone that I like, raise your hand. God bless you, dear ladies. Someone I know, yes, sir, in the back, in this room this morning that is not safe. Someone in this room that is not saved, and you know they need your Lord and Savior. How many of you ever say, Pastor Pittman, you know what? I know the Lord. I love the Lord, but I'm kind of far, and I need to restore. Would you slip your hand up in honesty? The only person I'll tell you not to is the devil. I don't do it to make people feel bad. Don't do it to make people feel embarrassed. But let's be honest, if you raise your hand, there's a better chance you'll take that first step if you'll raise your hand. How many here would raise your hand? Anyone say, yes, sir, God bless you, sir. Anyone else? Anyone else this morning? Yes, sir, in the back also. You feel you're far from the Lord. You're not where you once were, where it used to be sweet. Anyone else? Consecration. Yes, sir, anyone else? Okay. Anyone else here would say, I just, I need to get saved. Would you raise your hand and say, I'm not, I need 
to be a Christian. I'm not going to heaven. I'm not sure. Would you raise your hand? Pastor Pittman, pray for me. Would you raise your hand? Anyone this morning? Anyone at all? Say, I'm not sure I'm saved. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm saved. Anyone at all? Anyone at all? How many here? All right. Would you stand to your feet with your heads bowed and your eyes closed? If you need to come and pray for someone you love, if you need to come and pray for yourself or a need in your life, if you just need to come and pray, would you come to the altar if God hasn't prompted you to come? Would you come at this time? Those getting ready for baptism, head towards the back. If Abby could head out that way. Some are coming. Do you need to come? Someone on your heart you need to pray for. Maybe a mom needs to pray for her children. Maybe a child needs to pray for himself. Some have come. Do you need to come? Would you come this morning? If the Holy Spirit prompts you, would you come, please? I'm going to do baptism, okay? So if you could just... Oh, to be like thee. This is my constant longing and prayer. Let's sing it together this, this uh, morning. Oh, to be like the blessed Redeemer. This is my constant longing and prayer. Gladly I'll forfeit all of earth's treasures. Jesus, thy perfect likeness to wear. Oh, to be like thee, oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, tempt thine own image deep on my heart.